I believe you've been doing a lot of research recently into uh, the issues surrounding the future of Asian irrigation. And I understand you're the lead author of a new booklet, Revitalising Asia's Irrigation to Sustainably Meet Tomorrow's Food Needs. Uh, in the booklet, I understand that you've put forward five strategies for how Asian irrigation has to change if it is to deliver the food demands. Can you just outline for us what those are? Oh, yes, you're right. We have outlined five strategies and none of these are silver bullets by themselves, but what we are suggesting that a judicious combination of these five uh, might would lead to better performance of the irrigation systems. First, we talk about modernize the systems both in terms of hardware of the system. For, for example, some of these systems were designed for monocropping of only, say, cereal crops. And some amount of design changes that would allow a more flexible irrigation regime would go a long way in increasing the productivity of the system. So we talk of uh, modernization of the system in terms of the design principles. Then uh, the second strategy that we talk and we emphasize a lot is something we call the go with the flow. Uh, here we, we make the point that farmers, uh, while the publicly owned irrigation systems are underperforming, at the same time the farmers continue with their agriculture. They, they do certain innovations. And uh, we suggest that let us look at what the farmers are doing, how are they innovating and how are they you know, working within a suboptimal environment and still attaining good enough results and, and incorporate them within the main system design. Uh, for example, farmers in India and China have been investing in, in on-farm ponds to store the canal water and that increases flexibility of, of water supply. Uh, so we, we recommend uh, understanding farmers' innovations and mainstreaming them. Uh, then the third uh, strategy that we are talking about is uh, for, for, for the past 20-25 years now we have been talking of participatory irrigation management where the farmers are asked to take the control of their own irrigation systems and, uh, and a very thorough search of literature shows that literature review shows that the results have been at best suboptimal. There are some cases of success but there are a lot more failures. It, at times it often happens that the farmers are not even interested in managing the systems and have chosen to you know, vote with their feet by exiting the system. And here we're talking, I take it, about the larger surface irrigation schemes rather yeah. than the individual operations yes, that you're right. are yeah. put in place. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, uh, so here uh, we are talking that but these large systems, millions of dollars have been invested in these large systems and, and they need to you know, they need to function as well. So here we, we found some good examples where uh, there have been, uh, uh, how do I say, some private uh, invest, private, public-private partnerships. For example, in China we found examples where a uh, public irrigation agency through proper incentives has been turned into a private entrepreneur and they have been managing irrigation, it seems, quite uh, efficiently. So there we talk of, of moving beyond the narrow paradigm of, of participation of the farmers per se, but look basically broadening the horizon of options of how uh, irrigation could be managed. And if, if we have to do all these, our strategy four emphasizes on expanding capacity of not only the irrigation managers, but of the various other uh, stakeholders involved. And there we are talking of some of our partner, for example, FAO has this interesting model called mascot through which they have been training irrigation professionals the world over. And finally, we are saying that uh, we need to invest not only within the irrigation sector but also outside the sector because some of these investments have a lot of synergy with irrigation investment. Here we give the example of the National Rural Employment Guarantee Act in India which has been off late for the last two years creating a lot of irrigation water-based assets and how best can we synergize those investments with irrigation investments.